Okay, guys, welcome back to another podcast. This is podcast number nine. It's been an w- entire week of no podcasts, and that's because of the current situation that we're in. Plus, I think you've been busy and I've been busy. Um, we're doing this through Zoom, and on the other side of this is my good friend, Craig Seaton. Craig, how are you doing, my friend? I'm all right, man. Yeah, I'm just observing the situation and embracing where we are. How are you getting on? I'm good, yeah, I'm good. Um, you might just see something really weird down here. So basically what's happened is, I've just explained it to Craig before we went live. Um, I've left my pop filter at home. So I've got everything else. I've got a stand that I don't need. I bought that with me as well, a spare stand. Uh, I've got my laptop here to, for the recording. I've got my bag here. And the only thing I've left is a pop filter. So I'm having to resolve to um, having my sock around the uh, the microphone so I, you can't hear the pops, the loud pops and the squeezes and, and stuff. So yeah. Fun times. <laughs> Do that, just work with what you've got. That's all we're doing. Um, I've got a band that's playing some music on top of me right now, so I'm hoping that doesn't get recorded on here. It doesn't seem like it's getting recorded, but no, I can't yeah, so if... okay, perfect. Right. So, uh, yeah, back to the question. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, man. Yeah, I'm good. It's it's been uh, it's been interesting. What are we on now? Week four, week five. This is week four, yeah. The government announced that they're extending it for another three weeks, aren't they? The lockdown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, three more weeks. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm a man of solace, so I like, I like isolation in the sense of being with myself. Um, I have no issues with that. Being a natural inclination to um, introversion, which I, I, I like. I've, I've started to really want to get out there, you know. Uh, I work with people, as, as you do. Our jobs are, are working with people, which I really enjoy and I really love. But a lot of my rejuvenation of energy comes back from from being with myself and my own time and my personal practices. Um, and it's been a really interesting process for me in the sense of that's where I thrive. But I saw a, a big downside, which has brought a lot of light to, to hidden aspects of myself that uh, I, I will – given this time to do whatever you want and uh, to make the most of it or the worst of it, depending on however we, we see mm. things. I've yeah. been trying to do too much. We've really been trying to do a lot with this free time. Like, right, I've got all these days. I'm going to do this meditation in the morning, this breath work <laughs> practice. I'm going to do this style of yoga. I'm going to write this on the website. I'm going to study this course. I'm going to do these free breath work sessions. I'm going to do these other sessions and like overload, man. I hit a lot of overload and I took Easter off and it was just nothing. And I had a big, big reset. And really put things back in line to right, narrow right. it down. It's just a case of uh, streamlining at the minute, which has been great because it's I'm just getting free practices that I've stuck to now. Free practices, and that's it. Not trying to do too much at once. And so, what are those three practices that you're doing? Um, it's my breath work and meditation in the morning, like my 20 minutes to an hour of, of breath work and meditation in one yeah. set. Um, bow staff. And then one course that I'm looking to continue to develop. So outside of that is my own work, such as my own courses that I'm developing. But that's more yeah. of uh, as and when I'm feeling it rather than any force to get that done. Right. Um, right. And yeah, it's feeling good and healthy and, and slow down, noticing my energy as well, because I have quite a high amount of energy. So to slow that down has also changed thoughts, attributes in my mind. Um, right. So yeah, it's been it's been a really cool process. It's been very helpful. Amazing, amazing. So I I could yeah I can definitely uh, relate to the feeling of trying to get everything done at the same time. But having said that, um, what I basically did for the first I would say two weeks of the lockdown is to almost completely shut myself off from everything. Um, that includes training as well. So I for the first two weeks of the lockdown. Um, I haven't really trained much um, and I felt as though this has come at the right time for me um, in regards to obviously since about January, February, I, I've, I've just had a couple of niggles piling up and, and I just needed a rest from training in general. So this has given me that opportunity to just step away and and almost go within, you know, just to kind of spend more time med- meditating, doing breath work, etc. And uh, yeah, just spending more time with my sisters and, and just enjoying uh, the peaceful side of life. Um, and I, I've, I've really seen this opportunity as uh, this lockdown as, as an opportunity to to almost slow everything down. 
you know, just to kind of appreciate what you have in front of you and not be out there just panicking about everything. You know, we, we talked about this in the previous part, previous podcast about the what the lockdown does to people and how people are just trying to hog all the resources. Um, yeah, so this has given me an opportunity to to get away from all of that and just to kind of, yeah, just to go within pretty much. What have you been discovering? Um, I think I've realized that I've, there's definitely a drive to get shit done as well. And it's almost tempting to react on that drive. But I said to myself for two weeks, I'm not really going to do much on social media. Yeah, I, I put videos up there of me. Um, what was I doing when a lot of people were reacting to it? So I was making chapatis and rotis at home. And uh, yeah, people were loving it. And just very basic stuff and not really complicating anything. Uh, and yeah, the response has been quite good. And apart from that, I just don't think I really posted much on my, uh, on my Instagram stories. Uh, and then just recently, I've just kind of, you know, slowly got back more into it. Um, and to be fair, right near me, I've got some beautiful um, areas. So we've got a nice quarry around the corner from me. And I've just been, just been doing some walks and, and just enjoying some time uh, alone and stuff. So, yeah, it's been, it's been really good, this process. Yeah. Mm, good, man. Good. And you, you're reading something, right? Yeah. 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 It's a really cool book. So it's called... Um, an autobiography of a yogi and i can't remember the which which monk i'm talking about now uh, what was his name god it's funny i'm reading about him and i don't even know his name anymore <laughs> so he's gone no I can't, I can't remember his name as well it's um he's like one of the most he's the guy that the beatles follow yeah yeah George yeah so he used to dish out free free books of his yeah 100 percent. so what happened was he moved from India where he was growing up and obviously surrounding himself with all the monks um, and his guru told him you need to take your teachings to the western world you need to provide what you've learned here to the western world so he moved to America in 1921 I think it was um, so yeah it was an interesting journey and he's just documenting well the first half of the book I'm reading right now is all about his childhood um, how he had all these spiritual experiences, how he met different types of monks and how he was out there searching for, for a guru almost. And yeah, so he had multiple encounters with different monks and then he realized that these monks weren't for him in terms of having them as, as gurus. So again, these guys were displaying some amazing feats of you know uh, mastery. So some monks were able to... Uh, so there was one monk I remember definitely in the book where he was talking about this monk that fought tigers so he would bear with his bare hands at, um, have fights with tigers um, and yeah it was just incredible just reading about this stuff and and yeah and and for him it was just like okay this sort of display of strength or power if you want to call it is all the flashy stuff you know it's not the stuff that he wants to focus on it's the stuff that gets attention it's the circus performances and all that kind of stuff so he was more attracted to the monk that was sat there and was experiencing life without even opening his mouth or opening up you know giving any sort of in inclination that he's he's living this blissful life so yeah he went through this process and i'm i think i'm getting to the part where he actually meets the guru that he wants to spend uh the rest of his student life with so so yeah um any books you're reading sorry mate the internet's telling me it's uh pranananda yogananda oh you've been searching it yeah yogananda yeah that's his name i'm doing, I'm doing yeah. the role of jamie from uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. look it up, jamie. Jamie, look it up. <laughs> the only difference is we never get to see jamie's face whereas everyone can see your face <laughs> yeah yogananda <laughs> okay yeah that's um, him Paramount's yogananda yeah. I dipped in through a few different ones. I got back into the um, Tibetan lucid dream, dream yoga, Tibetan lucid dreaming book, okay. which was one of my first, which was my first lucid dreaming book. Um, really great book, and I just repurchased Siddhartha, which is my favorite book oh, yeah. of all time. I love okay. that book. So simple, you know. I've read uh, a lot of complex books and spiritual, self help, science, stories, whatever, and. Yeah, I found Siddhartha by Herman Hesse, so people will be familiar with him from um, what's it called, the uh, the Alchemist, which is a great book as well, mm. really really good book. Um, but Siddhartha, 
just it's so heartwarming and I, I really associate with the journey of that book. I think it's only about 156 pages. I read it in, in two sittings within two days. And right. I lent it to a friend, and it's one of those that you lend out that's not come back, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's worth it's worth not chasing up. I asked my mate, yeah, it's not yeah, come yeah. Back. It's like, you keep it. I'm going to buy another copy because I love it that much. Um, yeah. Which is very much about, uh, it's a tale of, I suppose, another viewpoint on the Buddha and his journey for a man who is he's questioning his, his own spiritual path. And he, similar right. to the Buddha's story, he has this life in front of him. And then he sees ascetics that come into the town, the monks, and he wants to go and follow them. And his dad says, it's your choice. And off he goes. And then he goes down different paths and he actually meets the Buddha himself. And then he right. goes into a village, gets lost in that, into the, the materialistic lifestyle. And he has his companion with him. And it's a beautiful story. And I just felt really, really pulled to it again. So I've just purchased that and wait for that to arrive. And nice, yeah, nice. I love it. It, it. it just settles me in such a nice way. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'm thinking about, you know, those stories and the things that support us, whether it's through films, TV, which a lot of people are, I don't know if you've seen Netflix's numbers, but they're like up by a ridiculous percent and data bet, use is going bet, through yeah. the roof. Yeah, because people have nothing better to do than just to uh, put themselves in these different worlds, you know, explore different worlds through entertainment as opposed to going out there and exploring the world. Um, in real life so yeah no what's, what's your take on that man what's your take in going into these these other worlds um i'm all for it i'm all for it if it so what i've done in the last i would say um year and a half in my life since i watched started watching jordan peterson videos is um whatever you do in terms of the time you know what you do in your daytime uh, to occupy time you want to spend most of the time educating yourself so if you can educate yourself through entertainment, which is a pretty good way of educating yourself, obviously don't go so hardcore and just start watching, uh, binge watching all the series and stuff, but try and see if, you know, a particular sort of entertainment has a, a deeper story behind it. So I would say like documentaries, I rewatched Free Solo, so the climbing documentary, um, and I was just completely taken back by what he did. So I understood it when I first went into climbing. I was like, okay, I do kind of have a, a basic understanding of, this amazing feat that he's done. He's climbed the Yosemite uh, 3,000 feet without a harness, without any equipment. You just think, yeah, that's pretty impressive. But when you've actually done that, when you've gone out there and, and climbed outdoors and you've seen how terrifying it is when you've got a rope attached to you, it's just mind-blowing what he's done. It's absolutely incredible. So for me, it's a great, especially today's entertainment, uh, we've got so much so many options we're not restricted by you know the six big entertainment companies we've just got so many options that you can delve into whatever you feel or, well you can delve into things that you wouldn't normally watch anyway because you've got again we've got more time to spend these days so i would say anything that has a educational value to you documentaries uh, nature programs uh, movies as well entertainment that like we talked about in the previous podcast movies that have got a, a deeper philosophical meaning behind them yeah, I'll do, you know, go in there, guns blazing. But then also take something away from that. Try not to just watch it for an entertainment value. Try and see maybe what this movie is about. Try and see if you've missed something from the previous time you watched it. And maybe also look at the, the cinematography as well and see why it was shot in a particular way. So if we go back to The Matrix, you see all the scenes that were in The Matrix, they were shot with a green tint. Whereas all the scenes that were in real life where the machines were taken over were shot with dull muted colors all the browns came out all the bronzes come out um so i find that cinematography really fascinating as well so i don't know what your take is as well yeah layered isn't it there's, there's more messages that come through and, and symbols that are coming through that speak to the unconscious the same same with dreams there's, there's always something coming through whether we're consciously aware of it or not or and if we choose to put attention to that, we can figure out those meanings, which would be yeah. more of, of life to us. And yeah, I definitely agree about the mediums that we use for learning purposes to combine it with entertainment. Uh, yeah, I used to play a lot of video games when I was younger, uh, which I loved. And they were always really with deep stories in. Mm. And then I got to a point on the, the, the journey so towards spirituality, I suppose, where I was like, right, no, nope, none of that. And I'm done with it. Yeah. Um, and kind of was resistant towards it, but then seeing I was blocking a certain format 
or, or or a medium that I actually benefited and enjoyed, and it wasn't as mindless yeah. as I first assumed when I was pushing those things away. Um, and under your recommendation, I was checking out the Studio you know, Ghibli movies. I learned so much oh, about yeah. them before. And I'm yeah. oh, on Netflix now, as you've shown. And I was like, okay, I'll give them a go. And man, Spirit of the Way is now one of my favorite movies of all time. Amazing, like, right? It's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful <laughs> film. So magic. Yeah. And I, I've not felt like that for a long time. Like the, the eyes of a child and in a state of awe and wondering, like, no idea where it's going to go. And the characters and like, man, these people who created this, have, they've used magic to do it. Like they told the yeah. story incredible and to be you able have to, to watch the that, making of the video of that as well mate it's just the way miyazaki's made the movie is incredible all hand drawn all hand drawn yeah it's, it's the process of it you know you feel it they did it with love it's like you know when somebody's cooking like we said before with ayavida the, the missing ingredient that people forget to use is love and you can love. tell somebody's yeah. a, a good chef and they cook well and you taste it in the food as opposed to here's some fast food you know, it's such yeah. a difference. You see that in the art of, of what people are making. But yeah, I think being aware of, of what we're choosing to watch at the minute, like a lot of people are going, everyone's watching Contagion or they're watching these apocalyptic flicks and it's like, you know, what's it serving? And oh, we'll get in with the times, but do, do these mediums, are they, are they serving your worry? Are they serving uh, inspiration? Do they serve yeah, love? Yeah. Do they serve excitement? What are they, what are they working for? Um, we discover ourselves through them. And it's seeing if these things are beneficial or, or negate from a positive step forward. Um, yeah, and being able to chill out with them too. Like, are we using a book? Uh, are we reading too much? Can we just sit back and watch something entertaining and enjoy the process? Yeah, 100%. So going back to what you said about people consuming entertainment, have you noticed if you watch stuff on netflix and if you watch all the stuff that's on uh on the news it's all about obviously um viruses contagions etc um and i think you've got to open up your eyes and see that you're getting forced this down your throat all the negativity all the stuff that's coming out of it it's getting forced down your throat um i get alerts from google news and all this stuff pops up on my phone when i've not even acknowledged i wanted it um, so what I've done is I've shut that side off completely. I get some people would say you're being ignorant to the deaths and stuff, but people are d dying every single day. You know, I, I'm not taken away from, you know, the severity of the situation, but if it's affecting you in a negative way and it's just causing more problems, you know, for you, just shut it off. And I just think people just need to stop being experts in the field of, you know, coronavirus and just shut that off and just enjoy what you have already and I think I posted a post about a week ago or two weeks ago I can't remember just one of my posts on, on Instagram I think it was a random post when I was feeling like maybe I should you know slowly get back into social media and I just said there are five things you should just focus on in this moment in time forget everything else just focus on what you've got right now how can you serve other people and what can you do in this moment in time that you weren't doing originally so you know, we talk about trying to pick up an instrument or a different skills. This is the best opportunity to, to do something like that. And I feel people are just, you know, and I'm not trying to put anyone down by, you know, for saying this and for them doing this. Um, but what I see is, you know, girls putting makeup on at home and all this kind of stuff. And yeah, it's great. It, it shows that you're missing a part of what you used to have. And you're, you're, you're obviously waiting for those days to come back. But at the same time, it's a great opportunity to just like, let go of that lifestyle, maybe pick something else up and maybe you'll find that adopting a different lifestyle that you're, than the one that you're used to, you might find something in that and, you, and then when things go back to normal, incorporate what you've learned in your new lifestyle to what you were doing previously. So I just think pe people are missing a trick at the moment. Yeah, there's a lot of negativity going on, but try and create something for yourself and do something that you're not used to doing, you know? Appreciate what you've got and uh, find out new discoveries. Yeah, I think even if it's one one new skill or one new interest, because for me going at the stage of burning out and doing a lot of free sessions over the internet and yeah, you know, yeah. responding to a lot of comments and trying to help as much as I can, like it frazzled me out and that can be the same as taking on too many new skills or trying to do too much. But if we just pick one thing and go, okay, I'm going to do a little bit of this every day or every other day at least and, and see where it takes me, um, yeah. as opposed to... You know, not not doing anything, but also 
for those of us who go pretty crazy at work um, for, for the jobs that we have and going, I'm just also going to see if I can chill out because I struggle to do that at times. I struggle to yeah, yeah. let go and relax and say, ah, let's slow things down and finding that balance within ourselves. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool for the uh, for the gym junkies who are going to be losing the mass gains, you know, and the size <laughs> yeah. and the physique, like... Yeah. Um, because I know that I know the pain of when you're stuck in that work and you're like, you know, I'm losing my pump, man. I need to, I need to keep training. It's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. good to be able to see actually um, something we've spoke about in one of the earlier podcasts is the the standards that we were setting for levels of image and perception, unrealistic and very difficult to maintain outside of natural realm. So when you step into nature and go, well, if I just keep myself fit and healthy and I don't put that much stress and pressure on the body, do I feel any better? Well, yeah, I'm yeah. Still completely fine, and I'm still healthy and good, and I don't need to push my body to those extremes for for what outcome other than appearance or a yeah. security blanket. Um, so yeah, it's it can be very insightful to let go of everything, let that that deconstruction happen, and go into reconstruction. Um, and what you said about the, the the sort of nights out at home thing is is quite interesting. You know, trying to parallel that to men and women, for men maybe the gym thing, and for women the the, the dressed up and, and having a, a, a drink yeah, yeah. and you know the makeup and stuff like why are we moved to do that is it because we're, we're still attached to wanting that lifestyle is that how we feel good when we're looking good and why do we have to show those those pictures off and even the even how i'm seeing instagram and the message i want to share out and deliver has, has really been brought home to me as well at the minute mm. um you know, because I had a lot of breathers come on to block for my breathwork session, over a thousand. And I was like, wow, that's a lot right, of people right. listening to, to what I have to say. So I've got responsibility with that now. And it just made me really reflect on the social media messages and the pictures that we're posing. And, you know, some people doing, let's say, poses, again, men or women, um, poses that other people do or things that other people do or like the whole coffee thing as well. And, <laughs> it always comes back to it. It's like my secret agenda against coffee is because we're having a stimulus and we're looking for something to perk us up because we've not generated that frame of mind that we're engaged with what we do anyway. So we need yeah. coffee to get us going. And oh, I can't start my day without my coffee and this stuff. And again, use these things, use them, enjoy them. But when they've become a way of life, or when we're doing these weird poses and pictures, and it's like, is that you? Is that really you? Or are you copying someone? And who the hell are they copying? And yeah, yeah. It saddens me a bit, to be honest. Um, and again, it's something something I've done, and I'd, maybe I'm I'm being too harsh in a in a critique of it. But I also mm. think, who are you? Who are you in this? Where are you? Where's you? What What is your message? What do you want to share? Um, and social media is bringing that to light that it can be used well and it can be used damagingly and. You know, these times, what is it? Well, the, the other side, we've got a hell of a lot of home workouts. Here's how you can be healthy. Or the videos you're showing, here's how you do a handstand. Great. Mm, you know, yeah. Stuff like that is it, good. It's, I think we have a very important role to distinguish our message. No, 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 no don't just me, no, I mean everybody. What is it you're looking for? What are you trying to say with that picture? Are you doing it to be seen, to get likes? Or are you doing it because you've got something to say and to share and to, to, to bring something to the table? Or are we just following yeah. a herd? And the where's that herd going? Off the cliff, you know? Mm. Yeah, so going back to what you just said there about doing it because you want to show it to people that, you know, you're doing something. It's, it's very interesting because I feel like the people that have interesting hobbies or whatever you want to call them, you know, some sort of interesting part of them, you usually find them still you know, pushing those messages on social media saying, you know, do breath work, fo focus on mindfulness. Um, here's an extract that I've learned from a book. It's, it's a part of who you, we are. Um, but then when you have someone who doesn't really have that sort of outlook of life or aspiration or, you know, a particular skill or a hobby that they enjoy, they have to resort to what their previous life, what something from their previous life they enjoy. So like you said, the coffee and the dressing up for a night out and, you know, you have to resort to that because you have nothing else to show to people apart from those aspects of your life. Whereas I've really been fascinated by the posts where people have gone out the way, their way to do something that I've not really known them to do. And I'm just like, yeah, this is, this is amazing that you're doing something that you're not usually doing. So 
you know, the home workouts are great and I have no problems with it because you have to keep your, obviously your physical fitness up, but you've got an opportunity right now to maybe switch up from, you know, a lot of people tend to be doing weight training and that's, that's all they know. They just know weight training. Now you've got an opportunity to, to get away from that. And like you said, stay away. You're trying to push away from the, uh, the attachment towards the image and move towards the attachment towards, um, developing some sort of, you know, proprioception, balance, skill work, just something that's you're not used to doing in the gym or you can't do in the gym because you're not really focusing on that aspect of, of training. So I just think we're missing a trick here. And even in the fitness industry, we're just missing a huge trick here where, and I'm, again, I'm not trying to put anyone down who enjoys doing HIIT workouts, etc. You know, whatever you, whatever keeps you healthy, you do. But at the same time, try and do something on the side that you're not, you're never going to think about doing again. You know, once everything goes back to normal, you probably wouldn't even go back to it. But try and do something like that, you know. So I've, you know, all I can do is talk about myself in this situation. I haven't played cricket in over six years. And uh, I posted that video on my Instagram a few days ago where my friend and I were just having a game of cricket indoors, just net indoor batting. It was just so good. Um, and I posted, uh, I think on my second clip of the same video, that um, this was a so much better way of doing cardio. The fact that you are, it's about balance, proprioception, being aware of where the ball is going to match where your bat's going and striking the ball in a firm sort of way, it just, it brought back the feeling of uh, the way we used to play cricket, the the sort of, the desire and, and, the, and the aspiration to just kind of get where the ball is, catch the ball in, in, in really interesting ways. And my friend and I have also been doing a target practice. So when I used to play cricket, I used to love fielding. So picking the ball up and lobbing it at the wickets and trying to hit these three stumps um, and trying to have that precision um, and yeah, and that brought all that back. And we were just playing this game where on a stool, I just put a bottle of, uh, of my water bottle on there and we were just trying to hit it as many times as possible. Um, and we made a competition out of it. And each time we've done it, so I'm leading it 2-1, but each time we've done it, we've just become quicker and quicker. So the games have become shorter and shorter because we keep hitting the target more regularly. And I said to my friend Andy, I'm just like, this is amazing. Like you've come from a position of not being able to throw at all. I've at least had like, God knows, 24 years, 25 years of my life where I've just been doing this over and over again. So it's just second nature for me. But for, to see someone who's not naturally good at throwing getting so precise with the throws, I'm just like, this is amazing. So it's stuff like that, stuff that you're not exposing, exposing yourself to. So we were also were doing slacklining and Back in the past two years ago, I tried slack lining out and it was so tough. So I ditched it within the first 10 minutes. And now I'm forced to do it because I've got nothing better to do apart from slack line, you know? Yeah, but <laughs> I used to do a bit of that with Scotty. He's, he's great at those things. And, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember doing that and having a hell of a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah, you know, we're, we're multidimensional beings. And I had um, one of my self-development clients, she's in Australia now, and we were having a, a, a session this morning. And she yeah. was saying that she used a really good example in the conversation, saying how she used the things were just northeast, south, and west. And she's like, Well, I'm realizing there's northeast and there's, yeah, there's yeah. southwest and all this. And I was like, Yeah, not just is there northeast, there's in between northeast is a degree of that, then another degree, yeah, then yeah. another degree, like 100%. thousands of layers. And that's us. We're all so multi dimensional in these different aspects in yeah. whatever area we want to develop ourselves in. And, for myself, you know, I absolutely love the bow stuff. And I haven't really done as much as I'd like over the, this year, just doing bits and pieces. And I've really got back into it. Like, come on, I want to, you know, I love this stuff. It, it fires me up. And when I've been outside practicing and getting new movements that I struggled with, like using my right arm instead of my left and swinging and catching. Yeah. And I'm actually focusing on footwork because I'm very upper body based. I was one of those guys who avoided squats a lot, you know, in the gym and on the, on the bars. I'd avoid the leg work and... I do like enough to keep me functional, but nothing great. My balance is yeah, strong yeah. and my legs are tight, especially yeah. since getting more into yoga and, and trying the different kinds of yoga and, and balance just coming through spending a time, consistent time on it without trying to get anywhere, but just to look after it. That's opened up things. And then doing my footwork is like, it's made my upper body, my catches, my jumps. Great. And I just, it's not only is it a physical skill, but getting into those attributes of the body via balance or movement or whatever it is, um, coordination, it, it, it unlocks things within our personality. Your confidence will change in certain areas because 
you could use your body different, like areas open up. It's I'm not quite figured it out. I mean, it's like chakra and energy work is when you're working on certain areas. It's like, okay, my root chakra about insecurities and fears and, um, and trust in life. When you work with that certain area, and you'd make that priority for three weeks. You soften it. It will affect other points. Like we we are multidimensional. It's holistic. So when we do one area, it'll have a knock-on effect to something else that we won't even register what we're working with. So by going into these other areas, phenomenal work will happen to the body without trying, without doing anything. That will propel us further. That will take us to something else that we don't even know we're going in that direction. It's it's a fantastic process. Yeah, I I completely agree. I think uh, just going back to what you're saying, to the chakra um, analogy, when you open up one part of your body, so for me, the best example I can give is through stretching. So one, the more flexible you become, the more you start to realize that flexibility is something that you can apply to other parts of your life. So, you know, um, I was teaching a client the other day how to sit cross-legged. And originally I said, look, you're not going to be able to do it because of certain restrictions in your hips, in your quads, in your hamstrings, glutes, etc. But try this out, try these stretches out and see how you feel and then, then try and repeat the, the cross-legged position. And yeah, it w- he was just completely taken back how well he could sit afterwards, straight after doing these stretches. And I said, yeah, so that part of your life is missing, but now you've glimpsed a, a small aspect of it. It's something that you should be pursuing straight away because that will enhance your life. So the stuff that we do in our daily practices, whether it's mental practices, spiritual practices, or physical practices, we should be able to take an essence of that away and apply it to the other aspects. So if you're doing, this is one of the reasons why the physical side of yoga is so big. The physical side is, the reason why these monks in the past uh, and the ones who created this yoga you know, process, they targeted the physical side of yoga is basically you're creating an environment where you can practice the mental side and the spiritual side of yoga without having dis-ease. So having problems in your body um, causes you to be agitated in that moment in time. A person that can't sit still, so a child that can't sit still because you know they've got all this pent-up energy that needs to come out, if you allow them to get rid of that energy, let them run around loose and then get them to sit down, they'll knock out straight away. They'll be gone. And this is that same example of us. A lot of people say, I can't sit still and meditate. The reason why you can't sit still and meditate is, first of all, you can't sit still. You can't even get into the cross-legged position or you can't sit in a comfortable position that allows you to relax. That's why with your breath work and and a lot of other breath works, they emphasize you lying down. That's one of the reasons because everyone knows how to lie down. So that's the biggest reason. Everyone can, can relate to falling asleep and lying down and feeling relaxed. Um, but we have that same position in other parts of our, uh, sort of positions that we see. So if you sit down, that should be the same experience. You should be fully relaxed. If you're standing up the same experience, you should be, you should be fully relaxed, but because we don't utilize those aspects in our lives. So we, we sleep a minimum of what is it? Eight hours a day average. Um, so we're, we're okay with relating a relaxation with that position but we're not the same when it comes to like squatting or sitting cross-legged etc because that position for us is not associated with relaxation so that this is why the yogis said become more flexible in the physical body so then your mind is able to to really uh cultivate the the practice of spirituality and uh, the mindfulness Mm, definitely man and think what will be found with somebody who has um, a keen eye or an understanding of, of that the level of interconnection between the body and the mind we'll see when you relax certain things in your mind your body will actually loosen and yeah, sleep is yeah, the process yeah. of that like it's so underestimated if we think oh when i start to sleep I, you know the body relaxes um and then we get on with our day and we're all tense again and it's because we're not consciously relaxing anything but when we start to let go it's like we'll drift off the same yeah. thing with yoga when you say like soften that let that go and ah the body changes and we feel better because we're actually letting go of those emotions that are resonated to that tight area because every part of the body every muscle every organ has a, a relation to an emotion and will store something in there so by softening everything or softening the body will soften the emotions in the mind by softening the mind will soften the body if we've got a tense mind, the body's going to be tense somewhere. If we've got an injury or a tense body, there's going to be a tense emotion or a tense aspect of the mind. It's, yeah, it's, for sure. It's real. It's, it's interlinked. Um, simplest process, observe your sleep. 
observe, yeah. observe emotion. And if you're angry, what happens? Your body tightens up. Where is that? Let's take a look at that. Um, and this time is, is prime for that. Let's look at the phase of how we're feeling with this worry and this concern, or if people are quite, okay, it is what it is, and I'm going to work with it and use this time to develop calmness and mindfulness of what's going on around us, the information, the entertainment, the skills, whatever we're doing, what part of us is it feeding? Because we are given this time. And as always, you know, as Gandalf says in Lord of the Rings to, to Frodo, man, it's, it's not up to us with, with what it is that we've got, but it's up to us to do what we want with the time. How do you want it to be? What do you want to do with that time? It can be tough. It can be easy. What are you going to do with it regardless? You know? Yeah. I think there's a, a fine line between conscious awareness, so doing something consciously, and uh, doing it as a form of distraction. You know, so if you're going back to everything we've just covered, um, watching entertainment, you know, if you're doing it or playing video games, if you're doing it out of distraction because you want to distract yourself from what's going on on the outside, then I think you're going to cause more disharmony in your body. You need to be fully aware of what's happening and you need to use your time to do things that are helping you cope with the situation, not to distract you, but to cope with the situation. And, and this is one of the things, I know this is going off on a tangent, but this is one of the reasons why grieving is such a hard process. Because bringing back to the idea of doing, it, doing things as a form of distraction from, you know, maybe someone, a loved one has passed away um, and you're grieving and you're distracting yourself by playing video games, entertaining yourself, spending, spending time with your friends, um, going out partying, binging, etc. It's because you're trying to run away from that scenario to, to understand that reality has happened. You are distracting yourself so then you don't have to feel the hurt and, and the pain of it. Instead, we should be providing more awareness. We should be doing things that bring us to the situation more. You know, Obviously, you don't want to be uh, coming to terms with the situation full. If, you know, if, if you're struggling with a situation, if you're struggling with someone that's passed away, you don't have to go guns blazing in there and saying, okay, this person's passed away. I'm going to just hit, you know, go ball, all balls deep about it and just accept it on the chin. No, no one's saying that, but people are saying that, you know, don't try and pretend that it hasn't happened. And I think that is the biggest aspect of what's happening today. It's we're trying to pretend all these things that haven't happened in the past. So I think my friend and I were having a conversation about this whole COVID-19 things, you know, um, worldwide, Every single year, three million people die from alcohol. Some, some, you know, some way in related to alcohol. Three million people die in the UK alone. Sixty, sixty thousand to eighty thousand people die from some form of alcohol abuse or you know something to related to alcohol. And no one, no one cries out or no one says anything. It doesn't come on the news, etc. It's not promoted. None of that happens. Same as the the common flu. How many people die every year from the common flu? About 60,000 people die every year from the common flu. But no one bats an eye for that. So this is what I mean. Be conscious of what's happening, but understand that this, is, this has been happening for a long time. It's just you haven't put your magnifying glass over it, like the way the media has been doing for us in these times. Definitely. Yeah, even tobacco and smoking, like, I mean, I think we're getting to the point where that's going to be, well, I say it's going to be eradicated. Cigarettes, yes. Vapes, no, because they look cool and it's, well, it's taste funny and it's, it's, it's seen as a, a trendier thing to do. But it's still the same. Like, yeah, you're right. On. Yeah. The, the yeah. virus is there. It's taking people out. But a hell of a lot more people have died because they're choosing to drink alcohol. They're choosing to kill their brain cells. And it's your life. Free will's always there. And even more, the information's there. Well, I think the media also has a lot to answer towards that and for what's pushed because there's agendas behind that as there's agendas behind what's been said for about sure. the coronavirus yeah. too. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, we can dive into conspiracy and, and all that stuff, but somebody's always profiting. Somebody's always is going to benefit from something. Um, but that level of fear and worry, same, same, but different. Like it's because it's a pandemic and it's shot out and it's like, whoa, the whole world's mm -hmm. being affected. That, that will bring that concern and that worry of like, right, how do we handle this? But then when people calm down and if they just keep focusing on that, it's like, all right, there is a deep level of ignorance there because there are more people dying through their own choices. <laughs> yeah, a slow death and they can't see it on the inside when it's with alcohol and tobacco and you know, they start to feel the effects slowly. 
Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm still doing it. The, the choice is yeah, yeah. yeah. Hundred percent. I think you would think in this moment in time, with we don't have a vaccine, we don't have a cure for this COVID. The only thing you can do, and that we know that is um, healthy people tend to just not get it at all. And the reason why these people are not getting it at all is because they their immune system can fight it. So we know that things that deteriorate the immune system, that agitate the immune system, and destroy the immune system. Anything that's poisonous for the body, alcohol, smoking, you would think those things should be going down. But if anything, they're going up because people have got nothing better to do than distract themselves with uh, getting pissed or, you know, smoking heavily, etc. It's, it, you know, it's, it's going to take a massive amount of awareness for us to realize that these things are not good for us if we are doing it out of, you know, numbing ourselves, like you said, to, to kind of almost get ourselves out of the the pain of reality if we're doing it for those reasons we're just gonna cause more problems uh for ourselves in the long run yeah i was having a conversation with a friend uh one of my brother's friends today actually and he was saying like my brother was talking about the truth of what's really happening and what's going on what's going to happen with the economy and the money and i was like you know when they can pull out money to go to war of iraq or they can pull out money to go to save the banking systems when they cause it all anyway it's like yeah. you know solve money for this yeah it'll have a big effect on the economy no denying that but it's seeing that where is this leading you know and, and he didn't want to know he's like well i'm just going to turn a blind eye to it and see what happens when it starts out because if i think about it it's just going to cause worry and dismay yeah. and paranoia um, and he said, ignorance is bliss. And that, it strikes a chord with me, man, because ignorance is bliss. But ignorance is ignorant. And when you know you're ignorant, you're choosing. That's a, that's a choice then. While awareness and responsibility, they, they come together. When you become more aware, you do have more responsibility. And you yeah. decide the choices that you want to make. And they're harder. It's harder if you're ignorant. Like... You know, kids can do what they want or as you're in your learning process through your whole life as a kid into a teen, into an adult, and you're directed a certain way and you think, hmm, something's not right, but you go, ah, never mind, I'll carry on. And you keep doing the same mistakes again. That's, that's called ignorance is when we're not learning from it or we don't want to see the other side to things. And when we're choosing that because we're not ready to face the truth, all right, I understand that because it's not certain states of mind aren't able to comprehend uh they're in a, a damn the psyche isn't stable enough to go into that you know I, I link that to the empyogenic experience or psychedelic experiences where certain minds will be like whoa what the hell is going on and put them in a more fragile and a damaging state it's not those things aren't for everyone and it's the same with the truth it's things should be done gradually and steadily yeah. Um, but when you know you're choosing to be ignorant for a reason because you don't want to take responsibility and you don't want to, I mean, look at me eating, like not to victimize or to pick on things, but we know animals are alive. They're not here for us just to eat, maybe to a degree with Native Americans and how life used to be and, you know, people when it was a cycle and they would eat um, deer or bulls in a certain area and then they would move on and let them repopulate because they understood harmony and balance in the cycle of life. Now we breed things just to eat them because we're greedy and we're selfish and that's what we want and we eat for taste rather than for, for balance or, you know, well, for medicine because food at the end of the day is medicine. It's not a flavor, for taste. That's, that's a side effect, really. Um, but it's to, when we can... Ex you know, and it's, it's not to point fingers because it takes awareness to understand those things and we're not all fortunate enough to, to, be, to be given that information. But when we know, we know. And if we choose to sit and think about it, go, right, it's going to be tough and it is tough to make those changes. I know that. Um, but if you do that change, it's, you're doing something good for other people. So we're also decreasing selfishness by expanding that outside of ourselves and, and giving something back to, to the greater cycle of life. Um, and this is the journey. This is why we can't rain down on people, but we can be like, man, maybe that's not so good what you're doing. Have you thought about this other side? Like, well, you can't tell me what to do. And like, yeah. no, no, I'm not. I'm just trying to suggest, you know, ignorance may be bliss, but who you're helping with ignorance, no one but yourself, which is selfish. You know? Yeah. So going back to the meat eating uh, thing. So this COVID-19 is a consequence of poor conditions that we keep these animals in. You know, if anything that comes out of this in terms of good is we should realize that we just cannot be treating 
the, um, the livestock animals the way we have been. You know, this is not just people that are meat eaters, but this is the, the whole of humanity as a total. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone who eats meat. If you want to eat meat, that's fine, but understand where your meat is coming from. Understand the quality of, quality of the animal that provide you, provided you the meat. So if the quality of that animal and, and its conditions are poor, then nature's going to come back and bite you in the ass straight away. You know, if you're eating something, some flesh or something that belonged to a living creature and it's deteriorated and you've seen it's deteriorated in front of you, you're going to say no to it straight away. But the fact that you've not seen it deteriorating, it causes ignorance. Um, and there's a consequence for that. It causes disharmony in the body. It doesn't resonate with the body and you can't digest it properly. It causes all sorts of health problems. This is why. Build up of acid in your body. This is why. You've harm that animal whereas going back to the native americans and going back to other tribal communities they had a res respect for animal you know when when an animal is killed it's killed instantly there's no pain and there's a sense of respect and appreciation for the earth or mother nature etc for providing this this food for to consume and, and feed the rest of the the clan so that respect is not there that one-to-one -one respect is not there and i've listened to many joe rogan's podcasts where as the, even though he's a, an advocate of hunting the he knows straight away that when you hunt an animal and you're face to face with an animal you understand there's a conscious living entity there um and you have to pay respect towards that entity you have to kill it immediately so there's no suffering whatsoever and if you have to eat the meat Eat every single part of that meat. Don't let anything go to waste. You know, if you're providing it back to nature, then make sure that you leave the remains there, so that another sort of scavenging animal can consume the rest of the uh, the produce. So this is what the problem is. Um, it's just our lack of empathy towards other creatures. You know, look at our lack of empathy towards human other human beings. Anyone that's a different race to you, you have a problem with, and 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 that awareness is projected into animals because there's certain moral grounds that we have with humans that we don't have with animals you know we can keep chickens in a small pen and, and cooked up and you know um shitting all each on each other and half their legs missing and we're fine with that but then if that happens to human beings there's a massive outroar so look at that aspect of, of life and just self-reflect on that may even <laughs> yeah like that differentiating dif differentiation the difference of say animals to us because they don't look like us relate you know we struggle with people no, I get the world's become much more multicultural, so different coloured skin isn't really a big deal as it used to be, or interracial couples or anything. Um, but, like, all you've got to think of is the people, do they care where their phones come from? And myself included, I have a Samsung phone. And you look at apples and Steve Jobs built all those iPhones off the back of slaves and, and sweatshops and Primark, cheap as chips. It's so easy to go in and buy slave shops like we still do it in in, in our culture now and I'm, i do it too you know it's I'm, I'm still a part of that it's like man get more conscious remember this stuff and they don't make it easy which is the tricky part but the obvious parts like i think we start with you know looking at animals and the, and the food that we're consuming because how many of us are even aware of how we feel when we eat something and yeah. you know you yeah. eat certain for me it took me a while to realize i was eating too much carbohydrates in my porridge oats I cut down the portion and I was like, I don't feel tired anymore. I didn't, it took me months to realize I was tired just because of the amount of oats I was eating, let alone the source of life force and food that it comes from. So, you know, life is this journey of this unfolding and if it can be brought to our attention to, to reflect and to see, to see these things, but this is where ignorance is bliss because it's a hell of a task and we don't want to, we want to stay asleep as long as we can. We want to take yeah. the blue pill and just, just take it easy. But if we want the world to be the better place is, it is looking at us like where does all that come from where does the racism come from or the country issues or the buying the easy things and or ter territory where's it all come from and it's like this is mine and that's yours because we want ownership of something or we want security mm. or we still have our fears or we can't be vulnerable or whatever it is it's, it's within us and that really is ground zero it's coming from there can we look at ourselves honestly and, and be brutal brutally clear with ourselves about the things that are going on with us and um, we will need help for that that's not a solo journey it's yeah. to see that yeah. Yeah. it is us and our perspective is us if a, somebody else has got a different perspective can i talk to that person find out why without me being triggered and if i am triggered great 
why am I so triggered about that? Why does this conversation about people eating meat and my views uh, conflict? Why is that a problem going on there? When you found your answer, you realize everything else is alive as well. Somebody else has done something to get that product there. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I mean, even just to, just to go back to Apple, look at the monopoly they have on. We were looking at getting a HDMI cable because I've got one for my, my laptop. Abs is a, a Mac. Yeah. And mate, it was like 70 quid to get their cable in and this other thing that plugs in, I'm like, 70 quid? Because they've created a specific port and a thing to push it in and millions of people buy into them and then they've got you and it's like, you're part of that chain to benefit them. They don't care about you. They don't yeah, care about me yeah. being the best product yeah. and they're designed <laughs> to, to fall apart within a certain time frame. It's like, let's wake up, let's stop yeah. this, let's... You know, make changes with the things that we buy because the majority of us speak with our money. Our life is spent by the products that we're purchasing and, and why. And that comes down to food too. We eradicate the poisons from our system, the, the heavy, dense stuff, the meats, the alcohol, the tobacco. Maybe slowly over time, you know, if you enjoy them, phase them out and just see how you feel. That point yeah. of purity to go back to the yoga of cleansing the system, meditation, cleansing the mind the entertainment or the things that we're reading or being around clean on a, on a level that's building up for higher attributes. Then let's have a real look and a real honest conversation with where we're at and, and where the hell we want to go. Eating that, you know, maybe it's a cultural thing. A culture's right. A tradition's right. <laughs> I, I, could, I couldn't tell you, but I just, you think what sounds healthy and what doesn't sound healthy, you know? Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, the yogic sciences, speaking of like mammals and bats, the yogic sciences have always said, if you're going to consume meat, it's never said you shouldn't consume meat or whether you should consume meat, but it outlies the, uh, the consequences of doing so or not doing so. So if you're going to eat an animal, um, the yogic uh, texts say that try and eat something that's the furthest, the furthest away from our chain, so our evolutionary chain. So if you're consuming mammals, which are, they have emotions, they have feelings, they have, we know this through dogs and cats, etc. Cows as well. You know they have amazing emotions and intuition. So, if you're consuming animals that are closely related to human beings, you, there is a, a, a dissonance that's happening in the body. There's going to be conflict. You know, and you're going to have all these problems. You're going to have the same problems that those animals happened, and you're going to adopt those issues. Um, so, it's moving away from that. And one thing I want to say about this whole COVID situation is the only species, the only species that's suffering is, an, is human beings. Every other creature on this planet is thriving. I was reading a, um, an article the other day. So the, the sort of the, um, the, the rivers and the tributaries that flow through Italy, you know, especially like Florence and Venice and stuff, they're the clearest they've ever been in the last God knows 200, 300 years because there's no tourism anymore. You know, there's not p people there to pollute those those environments, and the water's now crystal clear for the first time in a very long time. And it just shows you we're the only species on this planet that stopped. Everything else is moving and thriving and enjoying the conditions. And I think this is the Earth saying, you know, and I've read a few memes about this. It's like the Earth scolding us and sending us to our room and saying, stay indoors. You're grounded for what you've done in the last, God knows, since the Industrial Revolution. So it just shows, you know, we don't have this respect for nature. And nature, from a small little thing, we've seen it through earthquakes and, and you know other for, so, for, sort of forms of um, natural disasters, that it just takes one little thing and it will stop everything for that country. But now it's a global issue. And the, the earth is just saying, you know what, enough is enough. Like what you guys are doing is, is it's really shitty. Stop this stuff and, and think about what you're doing. Um, and maybe this virus is gonna wipe out half the population eventually, you know, but that's something we have to look at and think, are we going to allow this to happen again? Uh, the Spanish, uh, the Spanish flu, was it? Yeah, that, how many people that did that wipe out? And that was before technology. Exactly. So it's not having that, it's, history is repeating itself over and over again, and it's going to keep doing it until we say, okay, what is the source of the problem back then? We need to try and re stop repeating what we're, we're doing to this planet. So yeah, this, this kind of topic really makes me feel very uh, passionate about speaking about things. Um, and it's because we just, there isn't a, a conscious awareness. We're just doing the same shit over and over again and just expecting things to, to be different. Insanity, isn't it? Insanity. Yeah, man. And it's really, I think, to be able to discern that point of non-attachment as well, 
and seeing that it is a refinement process because as we were just talking about the meat or the products we buy or how, you know, the things that we're doing, um, all that is doing is when it's brought to our attention or we're stepping out of ignorance is becoming more conscious. And that's what this does. It will make us more conscious. Let's not eat that animal because this is what happens. Or let's not keep polluting because look how nice life is thriving when we're not polluting or doing those things or not narrowing down travel and tourism or not needing free holidays a day or mm. maybe slowing down and uh, on a grander scale changing the work work weeks for three or four days a week you know things like that that, that are really possible and people know we can't do that like we can it's a decision by all of us we have to look at who's running the show why they keep it a certain way why the economy system is the way it is all these other things like you know change is small and it takes time because we just look at ourselves. How long has it took us to get to this point? Mm. Through always climbing the ladder slowly, through conversation, through understanding somebody else's opinion and, and questioning and asking, rather than just staying where we are to maintain the level of the system. Like, it doesn't work. Obviously, it doesn't work. The way we live in life isn't working. Um, and people can get into disarray and think, oh, yeah, but it's so hard. There's so much to do. Well, what can you do? Worry about yourself mm, because yeah, that will affect yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. You start to buy just the, the organic vegetables for the market, that will change the market. If you start to give your kids healthier stuff and not feeding them sweets all the time, they will have less to contend with when they grow up because they'll be healthier. Healthier body, a healthier mind. Like it's, it's a constant cycle. Nothing is separate from anything else. Mm. And we just isolate and dissect so much. And the whole point of that, again, is not to, to get disillusioned with it. It is refinement and conscious awareness. But the more we can become conscious and reflect um, and let go of, the easier it's going to be for everyone. And the world will survive and thrive on humans will. And we can be what we're supposed to, or what we, we, I think we will get to, whatever that furthest point is way, way, way in the future, way past our generations, is that level of harmony and balance. Because we understand these cycles more we understand that we're revolving around you know the sun and the, the galaxies and the universe is all moving ahead and we're all a part of that and the planets affect us and the clouds and the sun does and the conversations we have and the food we eat all connected there's no separation because we are a part of that universal chain so let's be a part of the whole and not do things selfishly and that is self-realization and actualization of life life realizing life away from the personality like yeah. wow it's just a long way and painful if we're not conscious. We just cause too much harm when it doesn't have to be. But for a lot on states of ignorance and awareness, it does have to be, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. I just think um, it's, it's very interesting how this entire scenario has almost stopped the world completely. Um, and you would only think these sort of pandemic, pandemics and these issues only happen in entertainment. So for a lot of people for them to see society completely melt down, all the economy and all the companies just completely stop, it's quite scary because that's the only form of reality they know. Whereas, you know, if you understand, we've obviously experienced the previous uh, recession when it happened in 2008, uh, when the, the companies went bust, the financial companies went bust. Um, so it's a completely new experience for a lot of these people. And for most people, this generation, this sort of stuff doesn't happen in reality, it only happens on TV. So to, to see that happen in reality, this has to create some sort of awareness, at least for maybe 10% of the population, some sort of good must come out of this. You know, I, I refuse to believe that we'll end up doing the same, obviously we might end up forgetting this in like 30, 40 years time and, and repeating the same mistakes over and over again, but the period that follows after this period of turmoil and, and adversity, there has to be almost like a golden age where we start to really self-reflect and, and wonder, okay, this, these things that we're saying about the environment, the, the way we're treating these animals, it has to change. It has to change or it's going to come back and affect us again. So surely something good must come out of this situation. I don't know how you feel about that. I hope so, man. And I think, again, I... I I do my best not to attach to any outcome other than what I can do and what I can influence, which is the positive side of things. And that can some, that means talking about the hard parts or the negative mm. parts and seeing it, oh, if you keep doing that, man, it's not going to end well. It's your choice. You've got free will. But let's try and yeah. shine a light on the dark sides of where the intention is coming from within us. 
Um, but sometimes the pain is required, you know, the pain is, is required. Um, you touch the fire, you're going to get burned. And mm. Sadhguru, has a, he has a good talk on learning from experience of others. And again, this brings it out to the wider view of how we're all connected. And I can learn from you, somebody I trust, somebody who, who I believe has good intentions and, and puts the intention of others in front. So I'll go, okay, I listen to, to Chirr, I like what he says, I'll, I'll believe his experience. I might still need to go and do that myself. I might need to, but when you can trust in other people and you go, ah, yeah, that makes sense. All right, I'm not going to go down that path now. Mm. Then we save a lot of time and, and a lot of pain. Um, Sometimes we, we need that pain. Sometimes we need to jump from a height to go, whoa, a bit too high that. I'm not as invincible <laughs> as I thought. You know, I'm yeah, going to play yeah, a little yeah, safer yeah. In, in whatever manner that is. Um, the only, I think, what is risky is, and this will come to social media, that we can be following the wrong people thinking we're doing the right things at times. You know, yes, we can be following yeah. the wrong things because the majority of people are doing it. And yeah, it's something I've said before, but if, if it's normal, just take a look the other way. If everybody's doing it, just have a look the other side as well and see just because they're doing it, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong no matter how many people are doing it. And it's like, oh, yeah. what's this going to benefit? What is the bigger outcome beyond myself? Sometimes we need to really go in on ourselves and take care of ourselves and put ourselves first a lot of the time before we can get to that point. But when we've done enough experience and we know, know enough, it's like, come on, step up now and, and play your part for the world beyond, beyond just us. What a beautiful place to live. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting you say that as well because I remember just before this whole lockdown measures came into place in the UK, um, I don't follow football, but I think I caught the news and I think the Liverpool manager, I can't remember his name, but someone asked him from the press, like, it was the last game that, you know, the last, I think, uh, Premier, League, Premier League game because of the situation and someone asked him like oh you know football's like this and and all this global stuff's going on so what do you think you know liverpool's prospects are for this happening and, and he was like why are you worrying about football football is just like a tiny measly game you know it doesn't mean anything we're just kicking a ball there's a global issue that's happening the thing that we need to focus on is making sure that the people that are working in the in the fields, in the uh, in the football grounds, and and the the players themselves and the officials, we need to prioritize their safety first. Not worry about the results of these games because these games don't mean anything. And when that happened, almost reality came back for for the sporting world. Almost for especially for football, it's like okay, we just woken up and realized that it's only just a game. It's just a game, you know. And I think that kind of um, awakening needs to happen in other fields as well to realize that this entire process, this entire construct of society and, and everything that's happening is just fabricated in our head. It's, it's been told to us that money has value and this and that, but as soon as something big like this happens, it makes you step away and realize, wait a second, this is just a game. You know, it, it doesn't mean anything now. It doesn't literally means nothing because we can't do anything about anything. And, and so, so many people are panicking on that, realizing that if there isn't an economy or if there isn't me being able to go out there and, and, and party and et cetera, there is no reality. There's no life. And, and for most people, that should create a sense of separation from what's the, uh, the pseudo world and what the actual reality is. And, and yeah, and it's going to be quite interesting for the next couple of weeks to see how people uh, react in this situation. Yeah, man, it's like it's having a red pill jam down your throat, whether you want it or not. You know, the, the wake up call is there. And if that reality is too much, as we were saying before about having a stable psyche and balance, if it's too much, it's not going to be good for people like because they're not in the position to, to handle it. And I think to be compassionate and considerate to those people with families, like the, the, the person I mentioned before, we were having that conversation about ignorance is bliss. And I, and I, you know, I'm just trying to highlight that it's not the best route, but this guy has a family, which I don't. He's got kids and a wife and a job and a mortgage. And these are things that I have no interest in. Like they're they're yeah. not for me, which gives me yeah. a level of freedom and the ability to be more carefree in that sense, to put my attention and energy to, to things that I deem will have a bigger impact beyond my sphere and small circle. I'll be able to... Yeah, yeah to have the time and the money and not need, not need what that person needs. 
so that releases my fears that that person will have. I'm free of more fears because I don't have kids to look after like my brother does. You know, he's got kids to look after and a business to run. And it's like, it's tough. It's tough. And to have that red pill jammed down your throat, it's like, all I want is that security back. So I will do anything. I will give the government my rights. I will take whatever vaccine they offer. Yeah, I'll do whatever yeah. they say. Give me the loan. I'll pay it back. Whatever. They'll, they'll take it because you're handcuffed due to the consequences of the life that we have chosen unconsciously or consciously. And this is why our conscious decisions are so vital to know why we're doing it for, you know, why are we posting that picture out there? Why are we saying the things that we're saying? Why are we buying the products we're buying? Um, why are we doing the things that we're doing? Is it because everyone else is? Or is it, you know, is it us? Is it us? Is it coming from us? And if you want that lifestyle, the family, the kids, the house, great, great, do it. Um, but be in the best position before you do it to do it, you know, be able to survive and thrive. But things like this happen uncontrollable uh, like nobody knew this was going to come well yeah yeah the, the layman person had no idea this thing was was going to come and was going to happen so that person is is rightly going to be in fear and it's being able to digest that and see okay how do i get through this so it is tricky but maybe that is the massive shake that will require the future generations to consider the lifestyle of the future um because the future generations i i think are in trouble you know the younger generations because of the the internet and how we use the internet and where where our influences are and the things that we believe in and the abundance of information even for myself man there's so much information out there it's easy to get lost even when you think you're doing right you can just be taking information 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 and you lose a path because it's like i'll do that 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 like we said about the skills so much to do choose what's right for yourself um and stick to a few of them not everything it's, it's tough tough yeah for sure i think that's probably a great place to wrap up uh what time are we on so we've gone an hour and seven minutes so yeah it's a good place to wrap up um yeah, I think the band has finally stopped playing, so it's a great time to stop as well. <laughs> it's just been loud. It's been good music, but it's just been quite loud, and I think the microphone's been picking it up as well. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to add one more thing. What was I going to say? Yeah, so these conscious conversations that we're having, um, I've been getting a lot of messages from people saying, you know, just having conversations with a person, getting to know that person on social media. Uh, and they said, look, we love your conversations and uh, it's a shame that more of these conversations are not happening. And I said, it's probably happening. It's just the fact that people are not confident enough to have a camera in front of them, you know, having to have these conversations in, in front of a live audience and to be judged by a live audience. So, yeah, it's just, it's been a really good reception. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of people will be happy that we're back on it with the podcast. So, so yeah, so this was podcast number nine. Was it nine? Number nine, man. Yeah, yep. double digits next uh, week. Yep. Yeah. Can't wait for number ten. So this one, you can find this on. We find this on Spotify out. Um, so you can find this on Spotify. We're on YouTube. We're on uh, Instagram. Both Craig and I. So if you need to, I don't know, just give us a positive message or drop us a message. That's how you can get in contact with us. Um, and definitely do share these videos and, and, and com these conversations so that more people become aware of these these type of things. Yeah, 100% will help us a lot massively as well. So yeah, brother, uh, I'm just going to call it there, but then we'll just continue the conversation without it being on live. So yeah, we'll see you guys in the next podcast. Stay conscious. Yeah, yeah. done. done.